character name, Helrix, leader of the Order and the Crimson Wave. Originally debuted March 2011. Overall look and changes. Helrix is a perfect specimen of my older building style. She's my first ever female mock and one of the first to use my simple custom torso design. Her original build has to be one of the ugliest mocks I've ever made, but I've since updated her current design to be a passable representation of the Order's noble leader. In May 2017, I revealed a new form of Helrix, one that was mostly a palette swap, replacing all Mata Blue in her design with Dark Blue, and all the Dark Blue with Dark Red. This form was understandably named the Crimson Wave. Here's a comparison of how far Helrix has come since her initial release. Character Bio Titles and Occupations Helrix is a Toa of Water, and the first Toa ever created. Therefore, she's classified as an ancient Toa. Her power level far exceeds that of an average Toa of Water. She was once a member of the Hand of Artaka, where she led her own Toa team that consisted of other powerful ancient Toa, including the first Toa of Peace, Nomi. She and her team worked countless missions for the Hand of Artaka, until a security breach at their headquarters resulted in an explosion that crippled the organization. This event forced the Hand of Artaka to disband, and Helrix took this opportunity to found the Order of Mata Nui. Helrix now serves as the unwavering leader of the Order, and occasionally embarks on missions herself. In her downtime at the Order's headquarters, she writes and updates records on every being the Order of Mata Nui comes into contact with. These Order of Mata Nui files are stored with Helrix's other writings in the Order's massive library. Personality Helrix has the personality of a natural-born leader. She is usually calm and fair, but can be strict and commanding when necessary. Part of her strengths as a leader stem from the fact that earlier in her life, she was struck by an alternate universe sphere of fusion, which separated the good and bad aspects of her spirit into separate beings. The bad aspects of her spirit manifested themselves into a living creature, which would later grow into the being known as Flandrix. Helrix and Flandrix's relationship is complicated to say the least. Flandrix was responsible for killing Kafu, a member of Helrix's Toa team, as well as a huge amount of the Order's early members. It was this massacre that forced Helrix to begin recruiting Toa and Matoran to the Order. Later in her life, Helrix began developing powers similar to Flandrix's, and this greatly changed Helrix's personality, possibly for the worse. Abilities and Powers Helrix is by nature a stronger Toa of Water than average. She's also the most experienced Toa of all time, which makes her a real force to be reckoned with. Like all Toa of Water, she can create, control, and absorb water, as well as channel healing energy, but her elemental power is seemingly limitless. She has even been witnessed summoning enough water to simulate the crushing depths of the deep ocean. Helrix has a pair of fin-like wings on her back that greatly improve her speed and elegance underwater. They also grant her the ability to fly or glide short distances. In her Crimson Wave form, Helrix gains the element of destruction, which allows her to manipulate the density of matter. While she isn't too experienced in this ability, she has learned how to force objects to implode and to fire expanded particle blasts. Important Possessions Helrix typically carries her signature mace and shield, but she also carries a small water blade for close combat. In her Crimson Wave form, her shield was swapped with one of a heavier style, and her water blade was traded for a classic short sword. Helrix wears a Kanohi Gungnir, the Great Mask of Psychometry, which allows her to learn details about the past of any object by making physical contact with it. Mock Analysis Inspiration and Theme This mock is obviously based on the Helrix from Bionicle Canon, who is an official character that was never made into an actual set. I tried to capture Helrix's described appearance as best I could with my version. However, several liberties were taken with her character, such as the addition of wings and an expanded backstory. Some of these liberties draw inspiration from another character from the Toho Project series, Romelia Scarlet. Romelia and Helrix share similar positions in their respective universes, both being leaders of prominent groups, and this inspiration is even more apparent in Helrix's Crimson Wave form. It seems only natural, then, that Helrix should use Romelia's theme, Septet for the Dead Princess.
Helrix's version of this theme is a violin slash rock remix performed by Tam Music. Mock Features Helrix has connection points on her hands that allow her to hold her weapons. She also has a connection on her lower arm armor to mount her shield. Her Crimson Waveforms shield also has a loop of chain pieces that her hand can slot into. She can store both her mace and her shield on her back simultaneously. And her water blade or sword can be mounted on her hip. Both forms of Helric stand 9 and 3 quarters inches tall and 4 inches wide. Mock Articulation Both forms of Helric have 28 points of articulation overall. She has full ankle mobility, a 45 degree knee bend, full hip mobility, a very small flex in her waist, a double jointed neck which is slightly hindered on either side, a decent range of posability in her shoulder pads, a large range of shoulder mobility slightly hindered in the front, a greater than 90 degree elbow bend, full wrist and finger mobility, and double jointed wings. Interesting building techniques. Helrix's head design is tightly packed with Technic parts to allow for the connection to the Kina helmet on the back. In order to attach the eyes, a rubber band had to be threaded through some Borok eyes and stretched around the rest of the construction. She also makes use of this design for her upper arms and legs. It's a design that I discovered on my own, but it's too simple to claim I was the first to use it. Notable Flaws Helrix's long limbs make posing with her weapons somewhat difficult, as they are limited with how far they can extend without coming out of place. As I've transitioned into making more proportional mocks, it's been getting increasingly difficult to justify using limbs this long for Helrix, which is why I'm actively looking for solutions to fix this issue. Fun Facts As stated previously, Helrix is one of the first to use the simple custom torso design that I've used on several of my mocks. Overall Thoughts and Criticisms Overall, Helrix has room for improvement. She was originally one of my best mocks, but as I've improved as a builder, many things about her build are beginning to stand out as potential flaws. While her somewhat lanky proportions are accurate to how she was described in the Bionicle story, I think I can adjust the length of her limbs without sacrificing too much of her overall aesthetic. Even though I've been complimented many times on my rendition of Helrix, I can't say I'm finished tinkering with her build right now. She's come a long way since 2011, and hopefully, the Leader of the Order will be finalized soon. What would you rate this mock out of 10? Any questions about the build or the character? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.